Hi, this is Adam, and today I want to show you how to use FontLab 7 and several other apps to check, uh, proof your variable font projects. Since all popular font editors now have some mechanisms for designing variable fonts and exporting them as variable open type fonts and as static instances, you can use FontLab or any other font editor to develop or design the variable project. But then it's useful to test and check how a font performs in several apps. Here's a real use case scenario, the wonderful Stix2 font uh, developed by Terra Typeworks and available on GitHub in the VFJ format. So when I open it in FontLab 7 and open the variations workspace, I can customize it a little bit. Also need the preview panel. I can right click on any of the panel uh, headings or use the window menu. In the layers and masters panel, I can click on different masters to switch them, or I can click on the special instance layer, which shows me the dynamic instance chosen in the variations panel. I can customize the preview panel. I can uh, fill the preview or show nodes. And whenever I select a glyph, the current instance will be shown in the preview panel. When I turn on the interpolation preview, like here with the antibody font by Tyler Fink, I can plot a vector, interpolation vector on the variations panel, and then see how the font interpolates along that vector. And I can choose it freely. I can also set which axes are visible on the X and Y of the map of the variations panel. But when I uh, turn on the instance preview and then switch to the list view, I can uh, preview either any master or any predefined instance, or I can click the play button to variate along that axis. I can uh, play or pause the animation along a single axis, or I can also alt click to play or pause the animation along all axes. So this way I can smoothly see any of the selected glyphs or the current glyph as they variate. This is, by the way, a variable TTF that I've opened, but you can also open glyph, glyphs files or design space with the UFO. In the font window, you may want to uh, switch between the different uh, modes at the bottom right, uh, the cell proportions, and also between how the columns are shown, choose the numeric settings to have a fixed number of columns in the font window, uh, which you can change with command plus, command minus, or if you switch to the flex view, then uh, you can use a slider and you get a finer granularity in the command plus and minus zooming. Now, remember that the Layers and Masters panel shows what the current layer is in the font window and also in the glyphs window. And in order to see the instance that you choose in the Variations panel, in the Layers and Masters panel, you need to activate the instance layer. It's a read-only layer, so when you want to edit a master, you need to choose it again. When the instance layer is active in the Layers and Masters panel, the play and pause buttons uh, work also in the font window cells. So you get 
the live interpolation, you can see how your glyphs change and you can easily spot some potentially problematic situations. Switch back to a master in the font window sidebar, click the refresh button next to properties, and then you can filter the font window, click hide unfiltered glyphs to only show the glyphs that are filtered. And then click a property such as composite to only see the composite glyphs or non-composite to only see the glyphs that are made out of contours. Select all with the filter applied. Click the contour tool to open all the non-composite glyphs in the glyph window. By default, the nodes and details of the current glyph are visible. Turn on edit across glyphs to see nodes and details of all the glyphs in the glyph window. Now comes some glyph window wrapping magic. So by default, the glyph window wraps manually. So only if you hit and enter in the text mode, but if you turn it to auto, then the actual text size zoom level, which is command one or control one on windows, the text wraps at the current window width. But of course, each master can have a different width. So if you play the variation animation, the text in the glyph window with auto wrapping uh, continues to reflow. There's a nice solution to that in text wrap, choose apply and best do it with the widest master selected and FontLab will insert line breaks into the text at the places where the automatic wrapping happens. Now when you play the animation, even with narrower masters, the reflow doesn't happen because there are hard line breaks in the text. If edit across glyphs is active, you can really study all the details how the nodes interpolate, how the handles or off-curve points interpolate. If you turn it off, edit across glyphs, then you get the rendered preview and only the current glyph is visible with details. Yeah, I can see that there's something fishy with that kra. If you have a new machine, then the animation should be fluid, even with a longer text and many axes. Sticks to on the left, times on the right. Very nice. If you have separate variable projects, in font window, double click on the fonts panel to switch between the font windows. But in a glyph window, click the fonts panel to switch the font within the same glyph window, keeping the text. Remember to see the variation animation in the glyph window, you have to select the instance layer, which is uh, a read-only layer. Switch back to a master to edit. Of course, with the instance layer active, you can also preview metrics in the metrics mode of the glyph window and also kerning and see how the values change. Change the size of the nodes in glyph window preferences if you're taking the bird's eye view. If you have uh, many overlapping glyphs or zero width glyphs, switch the text wrap to table to get every glyph in isolation, like font window cells, but in the glyph window, so fully editable. Okay, let's make a recap of the variation model in FontLab. 
we have a neutral master, we have additional masters uh, that are located on axes. Every axis has a two-letter code that's internal to FontLab and design coordinates. The locations of instances are also in design coordinates. An axis corresponds to a FVAR axis with a four-letter tag, which may be shared among Hoi axes. The axis graph provides a mapping from design coordinates to user coordinates, which may be standardized for axes such as weight. That's done in the font info access page where you also provide particles or style words for the stat table. The font info font masters page places the masters on design coordinates. The blue dot indicates the neutral or main master. The access graph in the access page provides the range of the user coordinates, which are used for extrapolation within FontLab, and also provide a mapping from design coordinates to user coordinates, which can be nonlinear and is then recorded in the AVAR table. The red dots indicate the range, the blue dots are the breakpoints for nonlinear AVAR mapping. Access instances map phrases to design coordinates and are used to build the stat particles and can be used to generate a matrix of instances. So back to sticks. We have predefined instances, regular, medium, semi-bold and bold. And we have two masters, regular and bold. In the weight axis graph, we're going to extend the design coordinates range to allow extrapolation. So 65 and 200, click OK, click Keep, open the graph again. Now in the user coordinates range, set the lower boundary to 300 for light and drag the point down and set the upper boundary 900 for black and drag the point up. That already allows extrapolation within FontLab, but we also want instances. So we add a light and a black access instance and then click from access on the instances page. So with the instance layer active, I can now extrapolate which is useful as a sort of Dwiggins formula or tool. Exaggerations become visible and that points to problems. I notice other problems thanks to the variation animation and can fix such a problem quickly. Press 7 for Matchmaker, then um, adjust the view, turn on the auto matching features in variations panel, Click Match Masters, done. The two auto matching settings work on the fly, or when you match masters, the changes are baked into the masters. Okay, still some review. Ah, there's something wrong with that G. Okay, switch back to a master rather than the instance layer. Double click because it's a component. Okay, we see there's something wrong. Activate the two auto matching options. Turn them on and match masters. Fixed. So I'm sure someone told you that if you have like a regular and a bold, you can only make a variable font that goes between them. No extrapolation, right? Well, not quite. Go to File, Export Font As, and export as Design Space plus UFO. That will give you one design space file and two UFOs for your masters, right? Now export instances as UFO with subfolders by profile. You may turn off the instances between your real masters. Now replace the previously exported masters with the newly exported instances. Make a copy of the design space file and edit it in a text editor. 
So you need to change a few things in the design space. You need to uh, change the minimum and also the map, which is the axis graph. You need to add a few masters, like the black and the light, uh, using design coordinates. Oh, and the maximum. And then, in terminal, use font make. Uh, create a variable font out of the design space, and you get a variable font where the masters are the instances, including the extrapolated instances. Here's another tool you can use. Bulletproof Font Tester by Adam Jagos. Go to bulletproof.italic.space. It's a web-based tool, so you need a real working variable font. And it so happens that we've just made one. Drop the font to the Font Tester and choose Editor. Set the font size a bit higher and go back to Font Lab. Select all glyphs, open the text mode. In the glyph window sidebar, make the font larger, like 120 points, for example, and then apply the wrap. Finally, select all and choose text, copy as Unicode text. This only copies the encoded characters of your font so you can paste them into Bulletproof a Font Tester or any other proofing app. The Bulletproof Font Tester is really cool. It inspects the font that you've dropped and builds a dynamic user interface that lists all the features that the font has and also all the variation axes. So you can apply features to the text, you can select the dynamic instance using a slider, and the tester uses the browser to render the text. So if you run it on Windows, you'll also see how the font looks on the Windows rasterizer. And since we have this font that has a, the design space exaggerated through extrapolation, we can easily spot potential problems. Um, then, if we find a glyph that we don't like, we can copy it and look for it in FontLab using Command F or Control F on Windows. And then, well, check what's wrong. In this case, indeed, there's a mismatch between the two masters, which we will have to fix. Another cool tool by Adam Jagos is wordfinder.italic.space where you can find words that uh, contain a specific letter combination from different languages and easily reuse them for spacing or kerning. And another indispensable tool for uh, quality assurance of variable fonts is SAMHSA by Lawrence Penny. This is a tool that uses its own uh, engine for interpolation and therefore allows you a really deep introspection of variable fonts. That's the end of this presentation, but we have more for you today. Thank you.